And we have with us uh, Joyce Fern, who is the Associate Director for ANZ Modular Lead at ACOM. And Joyce has been delivering complex and challenging projects across Australia, United Kingdom and Singapore for over 20 years as a chartered professional engineer in collaboration with renowned international architects like Zaha Hadid and Lord Norman Foster. And she implements innovative and economical solutions to project challenges and is passionate in pushing the boundaries of modular technology. And with her expertise in systemized technology, she's currently leading the ACOM modular initiatives. An adjunct industry fellow at Swinburne University and an industry technical advisor to Melbourne University Camp H initiative. And also on the board of directors for Prefab Oz, a hub advocating prefabrication in Australia. So without further ado, ah, good, Joyce is here. Can you hear me, Joyce? Yes, I can. And I can hear you. So welcome Fantastic. aboard and I'll hand it over to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tim, for the uh, kind introductions and also thanks for having me uh, in this wonderful summit. So I hope that um, everyone uh, listening in had a good lunch and uh, ready for the afternoon session then. So um, I think um, I should begin. Let me just share my screen. Okay. Can everyone see the screen? Yes, that's come up perfectly, Joyce. Oh, wonderful. Okay. So, um, so um, basically I'm gonna to touch upon today um, on prefabrication. And um, the four areas that I, want, I would like to look into is what are our current construction industry challenges and what are the key drivers of change from a global perspective and why off-site construction or prefabrication is the answer um, to all our problems. And uh, also what I envisage the, the future of buildings in Australia would look like. So without further ado, I shall begin. So what is prefabrication? So I'm not quite sure what the um, audience is like today. So what I'd like to begin is to give a bit of a demystification of uh, what prefabrication is. So what I call my first slide as terminology debunk. So we hear the word prefabrication, hear the word modular, you know, we hear the word DFMA, you know, what does all that mean? Anything essentially in my books that is done not on site, it's off site, and that falls under the category of prefabrication or modular. And when you look at it in terms of elements, uh, you've got the 2D elements and you've got the 3D elements, the volumetric. So at the very basic, prefabrication has been around for many years. And but it's very, very basic. Um, it's just the structural elements. So things like the trusses, for example, steel trusses, timber trusses, um, precast walls precast panels, precast slabs, those are very, very basic. And then as you see, there is a subcategory of one, two, three. The tree is the one we are aspiring to, which is an integrated, what I call an integrated systemized um, elements or volumetric. So the, the added value is where you can have a lot of different components coming together offsite put together, assembled in a factory environment, and then that gets installed together and pieced together on site. So that's the, where the value add is. And on the right, there are some acronyms that you would have probably come across, DFMA, which means design for manufacture and assembly. So designing from the perspective of how you're gonna manufacture it and how you're gonna assemble it. And MMC, Modern Methods of Construction, so modern methods of construction would be alluding to using technology in terms of your design, technology in terms of your uh, manufacturing, um, automation. And uh, PPVC is an uh, acronym that's coined out by the Singaporeans. They like to call it pre-finished, prefabricated volumetric construction. It's a bit of a mouthful. Um, and essentially it means that it is volumetric <coughs> and it is pretty much Pre-finish, you would have, uh, for example, if it's a hotel modules, you would have the beds that's pretty much installed and in the cupboards, you know, the, um, the tiles, the carpets, all the finishings all completed. And MIC is a new term that's been used in Hong Kong 
uh, modular integrated construction. So anything that, um, that is being pieced together off-site, they call it MIC. And uh, OSM, it's an uh, off-site manufacturer, which is more alluding to like panels, like CLT, for example, Timba, trusses, glue and beams, LDL, so off-site in general. So that's used primarily in the European Scandinavian countries. So essentially all the acronyms that I have listed there, and there's many more actually, because again, it is an evol evolving, um, is an evolving field. Um, and as we progress, there will be more and more acronyms to come on board. So in summary, you've got two elements. Like I said, the added value would be where you have it systemized, where you complex as many elements as possible, fittings and finishes in the factory, where be it 2D or 3D, and bring it to site and put them together in the shortest possible time. So what do we know for a fact in our construction industry? One, our construction activities consumes a lot of resources and materials. Okay. Two, uh, and, and the construction process itself is um, it's not very economical in terms of polluting the environment. Two, our current workforce, it is an aging workforce. And fundamentally, there's a shift on the skill set of the workforce as well. We've got new generations coming in who are very tech savvy, you know, um, they would be looking to do, they would have different skill sets to contribute to the economy. And also we're getting uh, more and more stringent in terms of health and safety policies and regulations. So manual intensive uh, task and work, you know, uh, we're trying to move away from that. And three, um, our delivery methodology. Number one, our production rate is actually very low. You compare it to a lot of other countries, in terms of production, the demand and supply of production rate is not efficient. It is very, very low. And low value add. We add on costs in each step of the phase. We do not actually provide value for money, although we always talk about value engineering, value management. But the real value that we add at the end of the day is very, very small. But the cost is really, really high. And what we actually have in the construction industry as well as is that the technology application um, is, it varies. As you, can, as you have heard from the speakers this morning, um, there are companies that are doing fantastic stuff in the technological space, but there are still many, many, many um, uh, organizations or companies that just do the basic back of house. It's literally prefabrication in a, in a shed, in a sheltered environment, very, very low tech. So there is a huge disparity between, um, between uh, the two ends of the spectrum. So um, what are the global drivers then that will be pushing uh, us to do more and more um, prefabrication? One would be the Sustainable Development, the United Nations 2030 uh, Sustainable Development, the SDG, S, um, SDG goals that we are aspiring to achieve. Um, and two, we are talking about uh, climate change and our resources are actually finite. So we do not have a choice, basically. We need to look at alternative methods to actually construct, to ensure that um, we are sustainable um, and we minimize the wastage of resources. And three, um, there is an explosion, obviously, in terms of digital revolution and industry 4.0, as been discussed by previous speakers. And to top it off, we have the pandemic currently that is pushing for change, acceleration of change. So these are key, the drivers that is beyond our industry control. It is something that we need to embrace and we need to look at ways how we are going to address it. So why is prefabrication the answer? I'm sure you've come across this before. Um, because it's done, prefabrication is done offsite. It enhances the quality. Um, there's more precision that can be done on site. So therefore, uh, it is in a controlled environment, it improves safety, and there will be time savings as well when you do it off site, uh, where you have concurrent construction, where you can do the site works, for example, the foundation, as well as the uh, manufacturing happening all at the same time. Um, improving sustainability, when you've got precision in manufacturing, 
uh, you minimize wastage, material wastage. Um, in technology integration, we talk about IOTs, we talk about database, cloud computing, you know, cognitive uh, computing, uh, AI, you know, machine learning uh, that can be incorporated into part of the manufacturing processes. And then obviously the cost savings opportunity as well. So how do we use uh, prefabrication to address those challenges that I spoke about, you know, skill shortages, low productivity, uh, low value add, you know, uh, and to achieve the sustainability targets that are uh, for the 2030 uh, United Nations goals, as, as well as, you know, technology adoption. So if we look at it, uh, pursuing opportunities with technology, you've got a new set of um, skill resources that's coming into the uh, industry, for example, that would be able to adopt, adopt automation and manufacturing technology. Inherently, it improves productivity to quality workforce rather than quantity. So therefore, you would be able to address the skill shortages. And then you would have the um, technology and offsite in terms of higher performance, in terms of the assets, that you have, that you develop because of the quality of the production and uh, using design like parametric modeling, uh, manufacturing in terms of smart factory and site installation. So you provide better resilience uh, asset performance products and material traceability uh, in terms of um, circular economy. So we're talking about cradle to cradle instead of cradle to grave. So there's embedded data that we can incorporate into the materials, the source of materials, right down to the usage and to the end of life cycle. And then tracing the carbon put footprint during construction, as well as during operational, where the data can be gathered and then improvements can be made further on products um, for the next project. And missed opportunities, just, this is just to give you a number. This is a case study that's been put together by McKinsey. Uh, it's in the 2019 McKinsey report. You can easily get that online. Um, and in Europe itself and in US, the, um, the construction industry combines $1 trillion. And there is an opportunity of using modular construction to save $22 billion. Now, when you look at it, right, it doesn't look all that big. It's only about 2.2%. But when you put that in context to the size of the construction industry and the savings, it is a huge number. So what we, when we talk about savings in terms of cost, we talk about speed in construction. We talk about um, savings in efficiency in terms of processes. And we talk about savings in manpower and materials. So what does that mean for Australia? Australia construction industry is about 150 uh, billion dollars. So 2.2% equates to 3.3 billion dollars in savings. So that, that's a huge, huge number that we could do a lot with it. So what does that mean for us? And uh, how is our industry uh, going to achieve this? And where do we begin? So first of all, we need to look at how we do our design. Now, the way we do design is always We've got a functional space, then you've got the engineers that comes on board, we get the maximum grid, and then we design the frame, the structural frame, and then we put in the services, and then we pass it on to the builder to build on site, full stop. Now, we have to rethink the way we do our design completely. If we want to adopt this DFMA design for manufacturing and assembly, first of all, functional, functional space, functional level, we're not compromising the architectural layout. We're not compromising the functional space. It is still as it is. But the way we look at it is we carve the pieces out to suit how we can manufacture and assemble it. So we look from it from a macro perspective to a micro perspective and back it up again. So it is a holistic process rather than an individualistic um, process. So you look at functional space, at a functional level, you look at the room specific to the functional area, and then you look at the fixtures and the fittings and down to the component level. This allows you to what we call develop proof of concept. So basically in a digital way, put everything together as in assemble it together. So you know for a fact that it can be built, it can be manufactured. And then before you actually do the real thing on site, or in the factory. 
So this is what we, we mean by rethinking the design from a macro to a micro level. And um, so, and you're not reinventing the wheel as well. So what you do the data, you actually collate that and you incorporate that into a library of products where you can actually reuse it um, again and again. So um, that's being efficient in, in the, the design perspective. And um, also we think about construction from a perspective of industrialized construction from a production line. So we think we don't look at it from a project, we design a project, you find a system that works and then you find a supplier that you, you use. You need to rethink about how you have a system that actually works for multiple projects. And then you've got an open source where you look at, um, you provide, still provide the competitive tendering in terms of the big construction. And going through the project life cycle, we look at circular economy. So you look at the functional brief, as I've mentioned before, you look at the manufacturing, you've got a supply chain in place that you can actually use to ensure um, competitive tendering. You have the sub-assembly um, as well as the on-site assembly. So you bring, you bring the whole design from the beginning to the end and from the end, you do not finish it and demolish it and that's it, and it goes to landfill. You think about how you can actually reuse it from the beginning as well. The materials that when it comes to their life in a cycle, whether they are able to be recycled, dismantled, and actually be reused in terms of components. And just to give you a scale of example, some case studies, on the left, you've got a four-story timber volumetric construction that's been built in four days, literally, on site. So you've got only maximum 12 workers on site um, and you only it's, it's built within 50% um, in terms of construction uh, program savings. And on the right, you have a 44-storey uh, volumetric construction. Both projects are in UK um, to show you the scale of what of how it can be done. So the, the one on the right is 44 storeys, about 135 metres in terms of height and it's about 44 storeys. Okay, I'm mindful of time. So this is uh, my last slide, which will give you a summary of what we just talked about. So first of all, we need to have, every stakeholders need to come to the table. First of all, we need to understand what our global and national goals are and our aspirations for the design for the future to ensure that it is sustainable, it is resilient, and it is done for the well-being of the end users. And from the delivery perspective, we need to look at vertical integration a lot of collaboration between all stakeholders from the beginning. So, and from the design perspective, we need to look into uh, industrialized construction with digitalization and thinking of uh, construction components in, component, in terms of from the components perspective and systemization perspective. And we look at um, automation and smart manufacturing. And then to finish it off, this will provide you the quality uh, that the real value add for the end users, quality in terms of products, and is sustainable uh, in terms of delivery and operation. And last but not least, this is what I envisage the, um, the whole um, delivery will be like in the future, where we, it's a, it's a close look completely, where, where we design, uh, not to just design and then deliver, but to design, deliver, uh, for, end, for the end of life cycle as well. And how that's all been tied together is through the digital embedded data to the live performance of a systemized component. Um, and with that, I think my time is up. Um, I think right on time. That's my that's, time. Thank you That very was much. fantastic. And thank you for, yeah, I, I the, taking the time to, to share all that with us and, and yes, uh, delivering on time, which is always is always great. Joyce, thank you for that, and uh, certainly some interesting possibilities that you covered there. So, um, on behalf of everybody here, thank you very much.